Welcome back to the Mystery Garage. This week, we jump into that 16 valve. Okay, there's the 16 valve. So, you know, for anybody who hasn't done this before and it feels a little daunting, trust me, it looks far more complicated than it actually is. Once we get into this, um, you'll start to see that as you start to break it down, it really is pretty simple stuff. Um, goal here, I would say, is that, you know, I kind of want to uh, <clears throat> take the motor apart, inspect a lot of things. We'll take the intake and the head off and we'll take all the accessories off and that stuff. And as we're doing so, we'll kind of inspect it and, and take a look at you know condition of everything. At bare minimum, this is a good opportunity to look everything over and um, kind of replace a lot of the necessities. I'll probably, uh, well, I will replace the water pump. Uh, we'll obviously replace, you know, take a look at whether I need to replace the alternator, replace the timing belts and the V belts, and you know, you know, I guess at bare minimum, just clean everything up. You know, I want to make sure um, that I look at here is just making sure that the details of the engine. You know, the engine comes across as clean, cylinder walls aren't scored, um, look, make sure the valves don't look or appear to be bent. I know it's really hard to see without a compression test, um, but without a starter, it's kind of hard to spin it up hard enough to get a compression test out of it. But um, at the same time, I just want to make sure that there isn't uh, overall wear or thing, indicators that would mean this engine is seen better days. I think because it was previously rebuilt before it was parked, I think I anticipate the in inside of this engine to look far better than the outside does. Um, so we'll start by taking apart the intake. I actually sold this intake, the Shroko intakes are uh, worth a little bit of money, um, you know, just because anybody wants to do a rabbit uh, swap, like I said, I'm putting this engine on carbs, so I don't need the intake. The intake, the fuel box, all that kind of stuff has all been sold already, so we're gonna rip that off first. And as we start to break this engine down, you'll see that it's really not that complicated. All right, let's get started. One thing I should say for anybody who's not really used to uh, using Allen head bolts on engines, the one thing I do when I 
um, use an Allen head. I always hammer it in with a hammer, not too hard, but just enough to set it. Otherwise, you're going to start stripping a lot of Allen bolts, and it's extremely, it is extremely irritating. So it's important to kind of um, at least tap it in and to kind of set it into the base of that um, head to make sure that you're not going to strip out the, uh, the, the edges of the Allen when you go to remove it. Well, as you can see, it looks less complicated already. Let's keep going. Now that wasn't entirely important at this stage of the build, but there's just so much crap in the engine, I didn't want to hurt it by accident if I could prevent it, so. Okay, so I got the front of the engine stripped off. So I had the uh, the, the breather ports right there. Um, you got the oil uh, filter um, water pump. So that's really one of the areas that I felt that was the most concern. Um, there's a ton of, let me just see if I can focus there. There we go. There's a ton of like debris and rust in there. So I either might have to flush this block or worst case scenario, I'm gonna to have to completely strip it and send it out for hot tank. So we'll see how we can clean that up. Um, as you can see, the rest of the engine's kind of stripped clean. It was super dirty. Um, really kind of spent some time cleaning it all up and I'll obviously do a lot more. Next, we'll quickly pull off uh, timing belt and, and the idler and the engine mount and really kind of get re ready to clean all that up. I've also taken everything off this side. So the fifth injector module or fifth injector unit was right here. Um, filler or water neck, uh, obviously distributors taken off, um, that kind of thing. So we've kind of cleaned all that off. Then we're gonna do the uh, header. So I've already kind of sprayed those, um, all the nuts with uh, WD-40 to let them sit for a minute and, 
and uh, kind of hopefully help them come off a little easier. I don't think there'll be a problem, but a lot of these bolts on this engine have been pretty corroded. So over here, some little tips that I do. I usually, when I take something apart, I throw the bolts back together with it, um, just to, so that way you can, uh, you know kind of where everything goes um, for later. Now, most of this stuff uh, is probably gonna be replaced. So this is the oil filter cooler unit. I'm gonna clean that up. Uh, this is the breather. We'll clean that up and I'll get rid of this hose. I don't know why I had a breather hose on it, but I'll put a, probably a filter on there or something. Um, water neck will be cleaned up. <clears throat> this water neck will be cleaned up. Uh, water pump will be replaced. Hoses will be replaced. Uh, and this pulley I'll probably end up cleaning up and reusing um, just because uh, it's unnecessary really to replace that. Alternator, I'll probably be grabbing a new one. Um, all the bracketry again, like I said, I, I quickly throw it back together just so I know when it comes time to trying to figure out how this all goes back together, I have a pretty good idea. You don't want to get too carried away and you'll kind of forget how it goes. So I let it sit like that until I'm ready to start cleaning each bracket up. Uh, next we got um, <clears throat> all the plug wires, intake, uh, obviously this intake, uh, like I said before, I, I'm going to sell this intake. Um, so I've got all the brackets and bolts and everything ready to go. Fifth injector unit is there, safe for later. And again, all the air box and that sort of uh, fuel related components will go with it. So um, that's about it for now. If we get back over to the engine here, um, we'll start getting ready to kind of get to work on this. So uh, next, let's, uh, let's tackle uh, all the front pulleys and get the engine mount off. I should note before I took it apart, I, I, I put it as close to top dead center as I can get it. So you want to make sure that while you have these 16 valves or interference motors, so you want to obviously once you get the motor um, disassembled the head off of the block, you can move things around, but you don't want to move things around too much while you don't, while you don't have them synced uh, because you could potentially bend a valve by accident. Now when doing this, you can figure out a way to stop it from rotating. So as, you're, as you crack them loose, you can use some method. Uh, I usually like the screwdriver method. I've done a water pump pliers before, and they've worked out pretty good. But once they're cracked, they're easy to, you just don't want to rotate the crack too much. Now that happens sometimes the uh, stud wants to come with it but that's okay we're going to replace all these studs and uh, these should be copper nuts anyways um, so we'll be changing all that stuff Okay, let's move this valve cover. Oh, everything 
looks pretty good. Okay, let's give a few taps. As you can see, the head gasket was actually pretty good. I don't see any areas of concern. The cylinders actually look really good. I don't know if you can see that. Let's take a look. There. A little bit of carbon. Cylinder walls look Pretty good. Again, a bit of carbon, no big deal. Nice. Well, that's good news for this motor. Um, other than we'll have to flush that uh, coolant channel and see what situation there is, but uh, good, nice. Okay, so I just uh, getting ready to disassemble the bottom end of the motor, or at least just take it apart for inspection. Uh, I'm gonna tip the motor over. I threw, you can see I threw a piece of uh, cardboard there just because even though I've drained everything in the engine, when you do flip it over, there tends to be some residual that's in there. So um, let's take a look. Maybe can't really see, but let's try and get that in. Okay, so I've looked at everything and everything seems to be pretty good. Um, I'm pretty happy with how everything looks. I mean, obviously an eyeball inspection isn't the greatest, but nothing seems to be too, too bad here. Um, you know, I don't see a lot to be worried about. Thing seems to be pretty good. Too much wear. In, in internals in the block look pretty clean. The oil pump, bottom of the pan didn't have too much crud, crud in there. There's a little bit of stuff, but that's directly under where I was cleaning the breather. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so that was me making that mess. So I'm not too worried about that. You know, overall, I think I'm pretty happy. So what I'm gonna do right now is, because I'm not gonna be building this motor right away, I'll flip it back over here for you. Uh, because I'm not gonna be building this motor right away, what I am gonna do is, I'm gonna lubricate everything down with uh, WD-40, make sure the entire motor is pretty much wet uh, with WD-40, and then I'm gonna saran it. So give me just a second and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, quick correction to what I just said. Uh, I'm actually gonna put the windage tray and the oil pan back on the bottom because that's the best to seal the bottom of the engine and then I'll spray the top. And again, I'm only doing this because I may not get to it for a week or two and I don't really want any of the surfaces to rust. So again, it's just a quick rust prevention uh, and then I saran it to make sure air doesn't get to it as much as I can and ensure that everything 
can kind of withstand a little bit of time exposed. So, all right. Now again, this is far from final assembly. This is just merely to make sure that it withstands the test of time while I order everything I need. I wanted to take a good look at the engine, make sure I was happy with what I was gonna order, make sure I had everything I needed, and now I'll place an order for all the parts I wanna, you know, redo obviously. All the gaskets, water pumps, seals, all that kind of thing. We're gonna start looking at all, getting all that sort of stuff. And I'm gonna quickly show you the head. I did inspect it off camera and I'm pretty happy with it. Don't really have any issues there. <clears throat> so as you can see that real good, but a uh, little bit of carbon, um, but I checked everything. All the ports look real clean. All the uh, um, you know surface areas on the on the head look pretty good. I didn't see any um, areas where the head gasket might have uh, quit. I do think they cinched down the head bolts on the two ends way too tight because there was a bit of uh, a surface pressure uh, caused by the. Um, how do I explain that best? take a head bolt and put it in and out of one of the holes it's hard to get in and out so I think they've crushed it a bit uh, more than it needs to be so now it's kind of shrunk in the top of the hole and it's only right at the top so I might have to just lightly ream that out to get that to run real smooth but everything else on the head looks real good I'm going to do something similar I did to the block to make sure it stands the test of time while I wait for parts so let me get that done Let me just clean up the shop. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for today's episode. Really happy with the progress we got done today. Overall, pretty impressed with the condition of this engine. There are a few concerns, but I think we can address those when, uh, when reassembly comes. Uh, other than that, I think off camera over the next couple of days, I'll start cleaning up some of the other parts of this engine to ensure everything's ready for reassembly. Uh, we still need to wait on some parts that I need to get for this engine to be able to put it back together. So in the meantime, I think we'll pull back in Project Stepchild and start getting to work on that. A few other things I want to accomplish on that car before we start moving ahead with uh, getting this motor built. Uh, one of the things obviously is the eight valve still in that car, so we do have to pull it out. Um, I also want to address some of the, uh, the sheet metal in the car before we start putting the interior back together. There's a few exposed areas where the paint's chipped off and that kind of thing. 
I do want to get all that covered up. Um, you know, we are building this car for long-term long success, so I want to make sure in 5, 10, 15 years it is still a rust-free shell. Um, that being said, I do want to thank everybody for the last episode. We were able to break 100 subscribers, and that's pretty, a pretty big deal for me. It was one of the goals I, I had. You know, we're only eight, possibly nine weeks into this now, and uh, it is pretty cool to say that. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for the positive comments. And, and again, thank you, everybody, for who hit me up after the last couple episodes of uh, Project White Rabbit. I had a lot of comments, a lot of emotions about it. Really love talking Volkswagens, guys. So if you have any questions, by all means, you know, hit me up. I'm not an expert by any means, but I had some fun talking about it, talking about what I went through, things and challenges that I've seen. Um, so if I can help you guys out in any way, love to do that. Um, but thanks very much for hanging in there for this episode. I'm having a lot of fun doing this kind of stuff and I continue to grow as we go. You know, things I learn as I run this stuff, I run into some challenges, but I'm having a lot of fun doing it. So thanks very much. Guys, look forward to the next episode and I'll talk to you later. Take care.